convert or extra point following a touchdown in the Canadian Football League can be very interesting. You can go for one or two points. One point by kicking. Two points by running or completing a pass in the end zone. However, this is where the convert attempt can get very interesting. If the kick is blocked, or a fumble occurs on the running play, or the pass is intercepted, the defensive team can run the ball all the way down the field to the other end zone, and they would score the two points. If tackled before reaching the end zone, the play is dead, no points are awarded, and the team that scored the touchdown kicks off. However, you know, this play can work to the offense's advantage. Let me tell you how. Last year in a game with the Hamilton Tiger Cats at Ivor Wynn Stadium in Hamilton, the Eskimos were trailing the Tiger Cats by six points with about five or six seconds left in the game. We scored the touchdown, which tied the score. Now, all we have to do is kick the extra point of the convert to win the football game. On the snap for the extra point, Hamilton blocked the extra point. The ball hit the ground, and our holder, who is also our punter, Glenn Harper, not only did he reach down and catch the football, but he reached down and picked up the tee. He carried both of them into the end zone. And untouched, we get two points. We win the game by two. I know you wonder why we talk about picking up the tee, but the way things have been lately, if he hadn't picked up the tee and it would have gotten lost, we would have charged him $3 for that kicking tee. The team scored on has three options following a successful field goal. They can receive a kickoff, they can scrimmage the ball first down on their own 35-yard line, or they can kick off from their 35-yard line. Now, even though the rule says that you can kick off from your own 35-yard line after a field goal has been scored on you, this rule certainly doesn't come into play very often. In fact, as I said earlier, I've been around this league for over 30 years. I've only seen it done once. And that occurred in a game quite a few years ago now where we were trailing by 10 points with a bottle of 12 seconds left in the game. We scored a touchdown, kicked the extra point, cut the deficit to three. So while we were making plans on the sidelines to attempt a short kick to try to gain possession of the ball, the other team made a decision of their own. They elected to kick off from their 35-yard line. When they kicked the ball deep down the field and we turned it, we only had time for one play, the game ended, and we lost by three points. So even though it is a rule, I wouldn't look for it in too many of the games this season. Let's talk punting. A lot of strange things happen in this part of the game. One, there's no fair catch in the Canadian Football League. Two, no defender can be closer than five yards to the punt return until he touches the ball. Canadian Football League cannot be down by the kicking team. The punt must be returned by the punt return. The reason for this, the punter does not have to give five yards and can run down, recover his own kick, and gain a first down for his team. Also, any player standing behind the punter when the ball is kicked can also recover the kick for a first down. Okay, now let me explain to you just how this can happen. First, you gotta remember something. You don't always get to play football in Sacramento where the weather's nice. I don't think you guys really know where you're coming to play football this season. We have places like Calgary, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, where you're going to be looking at some wind of approximately 30, 35 miles an hour. So this is where a play like this comes into being. What happens is this. Number one, you have to meet the rule of having seven men on the line of scrimmage, which we do. Now we can take the other five and put them anywhere we want. So what we've done, we have two up backs and a kicker. But we've taken the last two people and we've put them behind the kicker. Now you say, why do that? Well, if you're punting the ball into a very, very strong wind, a lot of things can happen. One, you can kick the ball high, your linemen run down, the ball blows back, they try to get out of the way to give that five yards and not get a penalty, the guy catches it and runs for a touchdown. Secondly, just kicking the ball into the wind, sometimes it'll knock the ball right out of the air. So if it's gonna knock it out of the air, Let's take a chance. Maybe you may recover it and get a first down. So the rule says this. The kicker 
and any player lined up or standing behind him when he kicks the ball is eligible to go down and recover the ball and get a first down for your team. So what happens? The kicker kicks the ball in this area. Number 11 and 12, these two guys are behind him. When that ball is kicked, they are entitled to run directly to the football. The rules say these three people do not have to give five yards, so they can go inside that five-yard radius, and they can go directly to the football. And if it hits the ground, you have just as good a chance to recover it as they do. And if you do, it's a first down. You control the ball just a little bit longer against some pretty heavy wind. Unlike the American game, there are no touchbacks either in the Canadian Football League. There are three options when a punt goes into the end zone. One, run the ball out and take possession. First down at the point tackled. No point. Two, catch the ball, give up the point, and take possession at your own 35-yard line. First down. Catch the ball and kick the ball out of the end zone. This usually only happens at the end of the game and when the score is tied. Now, I want to tell you a story about this business of kicking the ball in and out of the end zone at the end of a game. It really does happen. In fact, in 1972 at Winnipeg Stadium, in the Western Final, a game between the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, this was a big part of the football game. And I'm sure John Payne, the offensive line coach with you in Sacramento, will remember this story very well because he was our coach. Anyway, the score was tied at 24 with no time on the clock. We had the football on about the Winnipeg 29-yard line and attempted a field goal. The kick went wide. The defensive back for Winnipeg, now not wanting to give up a single point and lose the game, he kicked the ball out of the end zone. We caught the football and punted it back into the end zone. Again, the defensive back for Winnipeg caught the ball and punted it back out of the end zone. However, this time, when we caught the punt and we caught that ball coming out of the end zone, Winnipeg did not give us five yards to return the ball, which is against the rules. A flag was thrown. We got a penalty, a re-kick. Game was over, we kicked the field goal, beat Winnipeg 27-24, won the West, and went on to the Grey Cup. So, there's lots to look for in Canadian football. The size of the field dictates the strategy. The three downs allow for a wide open style of play, dominated by the pass. Quarterbacks are strong arm, mobile, and the ability to throw on the run. There are 12 players. Unlimited motion. Room to scramble. All sorts of quarterbacks scramble. Turn punch. A rouge. A two point conversion. Only one thirty second timeout per team per half. The score is tied at the end of regulation time. There is no sudden death overtime. There is overtime, and it consists of two five-minute halves of football. Wide open. Longer. Wider. Faster. Canadian football. Catch it. You'll love it.